coming here to the stage, you've got the toilet paper to show for it. That's right. It's someone who has made an incredible, incredible business in your industry. Uh, Ramiz, uh, Ramiz, sorry, Ramiz. <laughs> Ramiz Hakim is with North Star Insurance. He's been in business for 12 years. And really, they took a family-owned insurance shop and made that into an insurance empire that produces over $25 million in premium. 100% of that over the phone. I'm going to repeat that. 100% of that over the phone. They do it in a 100,000 square foot call center facility. They were here sitting in the front row for their first 8% nation. He's presenting on stage at the second 8% nation. Let's welcome managing partner, North Star Insurance, Ramiz Hakeem. Boom. We, we, we are North Star. Yeah. North Star Insurance Advisor. We partner up with people, help them build their empire. We are North Star. Together on a journey, we will ride through. In the right direction, we will guide you. We, we are North Star. We make it happen. No excuses, let's do it. Take action, make it happen. You already know what it is. 8%, how you doing? Thank you, Jan, for the nice intro. Okay, okay. There it goes. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, hope y'all are doing well. It's good to see you. First, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for getting me on the stage. Okay. I am blessed beyond measure, and how I got here, really, I can't even explain it. So, I'm, I really want to start with something a little uncomfortable, okay? Do I have your permission to make you a little uncomfortable? Okay, now that's dangerous. Okay. All right, here's what we're gonna do. This is kind of, this is kind of weird, but you'll get to know me and then you'll, it'll make sense here in a second. I'm looking for, wait a second, actually, how about, how about some money to make it even easier to be a little uncomfortable? Okay, I'm looking for the person that can make me, matter of fact, everybody stand up for me. Everybody stand up. And I'm looking for the person that can make me the freaking goofiest possible face for $100. The, the go That's your voice, not your face, okay? Uh, some of y'all, I can't tell if you're acting goofy or if it's just your face. Um, I, I don't see any goofy fa Okay, remind me your name. I like you. Rebecca. Rebecca. Come up here, Rebecca. Give it up for Rebecca with her goofy face. Her goofy face. Have a seat for me, please. Thank you. Was that kind of weird, Rebecca? Have you ever been given $100 to make a goofy face before? I plead the fifth. You plead the fifth. Well, I didn't want to know that story. Here you go. You, can, you don't have to come up here, girl. There you go. Congratulations. Hey, no chargebacks on that either. It's in your pocket. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. That's all I needed. Oh, do you want to show everybody your goofy face? Go ahead. Woo! Okay, she has a seven-year-old. All right, well, he's probably hiding under his bed tonight. Okay, now, I really want to talk to you about something uncomfortable. Um, what I'm going to be discussing with you is not only uncomfortable for you, but it's really uncomfortable for me. Um, as many of you know, I'm not supposed to be the person on the stage today, okay? Okay. Um, I had a wonderful business partner that spoke last year at 8% Nation. He did a phenomenal job. He was my business partner for almost 10 years. And um, last year at 8% Nation, he had a clean bill of health. And he was told he was cancer-free. And then a, a number of months later, uh, he passed away from cancer. His name was Vince Spampanato. And this is uncomfortable for me because I believe that this is the presentation that Vince would have wanted to give to you. Now, he is on bigger and better stages. He is on bigger and better stages and I am grateful to have known him. Uh, he was extremely passionate about helping agents like you to the point 
where myself and the other partners would try to hold him back, okay? We'd say, Vince, you can't be giving away all of our secret recipes, okay? Like, Vince, they ain't going to pay us if we give it to them for free, you know? Vince, tone it down on Facebook. Vince, but he was relentless in giving away everything he possibly could to every single person he possibly could because he truly believed that this industry could make anybody achieve anything they wanted to. Would you do me a favor? Could you give Vince Pompanato a hand for me, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I've been fortunate enough and blessed enough to really be uh, put into a position where myself and my partners are managing the largest independent agency selling final expense completely over the telephone, okay? And I'm gonna give you the secret recipe. And this is very uncomfortable for me because I think you should pay me if I give it to you, but not today, okay? <laughs> but you, Nate, I'm gonna charge double. Okay, now, I started in the industry just like each and every one of you. Those of you that were at the VIP lunch today, how awesome was that that Cody and Lauren put that on? I gave that a little bit of that snippet today, but I'm, I'm gonna give it again because I think it resonates with just about everybody in this room, okay? I was broke, I was in a hard place, I wasn't qualified for a job, so I did what, what really a lot of us do, we go to a place that'll hire us first, and by golly, I had so many insurance offers, I was like, geez, I'm really a valuable person. They just hire just about anybody, right? So I didn't know that at the time, but now I'm looking back like, okay, uh, that was kinda cool. So I got a job in the insurance field. And they told me I was a financial advisor, okay? I'm like, dang, that's awesome. And then I took this, um, these exam, this, 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 these classes, and I took this exam, and I passed my test with a 70%, okay? Okay, thank you. And then, and, then I, and then I had to borrow money from my grandma to get appointed with the state to get my license actually activated. And then I started working. And then I got these leads. And I would show up to these houses and have to sit in like really gross places. <laughs> and I'd have to like convince people that Yes, this is your signature. You mailed this in, okay? Anyone got that problem where they think you're like a forgery artist and you show up at the door and they're like, that ain't me. I'm like, well, I didn't even know, like, this is you, lady, okay? You know what I mean? And then I'd, like, I'd have to pretend like I was interested in what they had to say. You're laughing because it's true, okay? <laughs> Okay, and then they were always broke and I had to like help them cancel their cable. Like the broke people got better stuff than me sometimes, okay. And then I'd get, sell the policy and then I had to show back up the next week to deliver the policy. And then like a week after that, their kids would always call me so upset that we canceled mom's cable and that we can't watch The Sopranos anymore and you took her checkbook and you got her this policy and, and we don't need this stuff from you. Does this resonate with anybody? Okay, ooh. That was the only one, y'all being quiet like, okay, is he really saying that on stage? Is this, is this, are we okay to talk about this? I think we are, I think we are. I was burnt out. I was tired, I was weary, I was crabby, I was unhappy. I did not want to do this crap anymore. So I did what every responsible insurance agent does in that situation. I started recruiting agents. <laughs> Come on now, don't be lying. Don't be lying, okay? Yes. 
Because I was not going to do that anymore. One time, I'm getting way too honest right now, Cody. You might have to bleep this out of the recording. One time, I went into a woman's home, and I sat down on her cushion, and I could feel the cat pee coming up in my pants. And then I looked around, and she didn't have any cats. And every final expense agent in this room has a story just like that. Okay? Thank you. Hello. All right. We're on the same page. We're on the same page. Yeah, these two guys over here are like, yeah. They're from the same town. You got the same client. Okay. It's probably NSF in both of you right now, matter of fact. So I started recruiting agents. I thought, man, like there is money. I was making good money. Like, Good money is only good to an extent, but I did not enjoy what I was doing. So as I recruited these agents, and man, I was a good recruiter, I was selling them the dream, and then they'd come in, I'd start selling them leads, okay? And then they'd call me, and they'd say, Ramiz, I went to this lady's home, and I sat on her couch, and I felt this cat pee come up to me. And she ain't got no cats. Or they'd complain because their daughter would call them and try to convince them not to get the insurance. Or they weren't making any money because they couldn't get their leads on the phone. And it was over. Like now, I didn't have a me problem. I had 20 people's problems all on my shoulder. Any upline know what I'm talking about right now? Okay, whoo, thank you. It ain't just me. Give your uplines a round of applause. Okay, that's good. We got some good IMOs in here. If we can get that many agents clapping for their uplines, that's good. Okay, that's real good. I was done. Like, this, this, this is not me. This is not who I am. I needed help. I needed to get out of what I was doing and the problem was, is that everybody in the insurance industry was telling me, Ramiz, you're doing a good job. You're hitting big numbers. You've got big volume. You're recruiting a lot of agents. You're buying a lot of leads. And I'm like, dude, I just had someone call me and tell me they sat, they sat in cat pee yesterday. <laughs> like, that is, not, that is not what I thought I was getting myself into. I needed to begin changing my mindset from a salesman to a businessman. You see, what happened to me is probably exactly where you are right now. Your business is owned, operated, and functioning solely on your efforts. And if something were to happen to you, you're gone and your business is gone. Is that why we got into this business? So that we could build something for ourselves and then have it just wash away when we're not there anymore? Now, lucky for me, when I first got in the business, just like most final expense agents, I was living in my mother's basement. <laughs> Isn't it funny that when, when you start off as a final expense agent, you really start off as a final expense client trying to sell final expense? Okay, let that sink in. So, and I didn't have any money, I was broke. You know, Nate, like the normal final expense agent, okay? Getting started. I needed to begin siphoning off some of these responsibilities so that I could work in the area that I loved to do, that filled me up, that allowed for me to really showcase my unique abilities. And see, the reason why you got in the business was for the same reason. You enjoy making sales, you enjoy talking to prospects. You enjoy making money. But see, most of your time is not spent doing that. Most of your time is spent calling on leads, calling them back, leaving a message, driving to the appointment, being no-showed. Putting who, who uses those dorky delivery stickers? Don't raise your hand. Oh, a lot of you, a lot of dorks, that's all right. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. All right, I give it to you. You got to do what you got to do. I, used, I was trained. You talk about being a dork. I was trained when I got out of the door, I had to start waving 
while I jumped to the door, okay? I'm like, and my manager was with me, okay? I'm like, well, I gotta wave. I felt like a complete idiot. And he was so excited, he'd be like, I'm like, I, I'm not at that level, dude. And then as soon as the door, like the door hinge started to like even inch a little bit, he said, now you got to wipe your feet before you walk in the door because they ain't got to know you're going in the door. I'm like, man, you are a dork, okay? And I got nothing in common with you and you probably just got this job because you saw one policy and I'm under you and you're under him and you're under him, you're under him. Who's, who knows what I'm talking about, okay? Now you know what I'm talking about. So I had to start siphoning off these responsibilities. I lived with my mother. I'm the oldest of four. And so I'm like, mom, you wanna go in business with me? And she's like, dude, you're living in my basement, you know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but mom, all final expense agents start living in their, in their mom's basement. So she started setting appointments for me. You see, I started investing money in my business so that I could be thrusted into an area that allowed me to showcase what I was good at Although I hated driving and getting into those homes and closing those deals, it's not where I envisioned that it would take me. I made good money at that. I just hated everything else that led to that. Then I hired my brother, Tony. And I said, Tony, listen, man, I'm rocking this out. Like, I'm making good money. I have to buy new clothes every week, but it's okay. We're making good money. And <laughs> after I got married, my wife made me take off my clothes before I got in the house, okay? If you want some good clients, you do whatever it takes to get them good clients, at least in final expense. This may not ring true for everybody. I'm a final expense agent, okay? And uh, I said, Tony, listen, man, if, we can just, if you could just service these people for me, like when they call in and complain, just like smooth them up. And Tony always just get all the girls in high school. He'd be like, yeah, Miss Mary, yeah, listen, it's okay. She's like, well, I hate your brother. I don't want to buy from it. Mary, it's, it's going to be all right, honey. He'd just soothe them over. So I didn't have to answer those calls. My mom was setting my appointments for me, and I was just driving and driving and driving and just bam, just busting out sale after sale after sale. We didn't have a choice. We needed to make money. And then we got this wild idea. We said, dude, if we can sell this over the telephone and not have to, not have to drive, not waste any time doing anything, like we would kill it doing this. We would kill it doing this. So what we started to do is I started finding people that I knew, liked, and trusted and said, come on, let's do this. Let's work together at this. So my brother Tony, my good friend Vince Spompanato, who was a field agent at the time, one of the ones I recruited that used to complain to me all the time, okay, I pulled him in. Aaron Eitzen, who was already selling final expense at a small scale over the phone, we partnered together. And I said, boys, there's nobody doing this right now, but we got to figure this out. The industry needs this. And what we found was, is as we started building our business, we naturally began to gravitate into areas of the business that we felt like we could excel at. For example, Vince was an excellent trainer. Excellent trainer. I mean, so much so he'd give it away for free, which drove me nuts. But he loved it. It was what filled him up. When he trained all day, he'd go home and be a better dad, a better, better spouse, a better partner. But when, we, when he got pulled away and did like clerical work, man, he was a jerk because that's not what he liked doing. Tony was great at operations. He would run the day-to-day -day operations, and if you know Tony, he's behind there recording right now, but he's, he's like the opposite of me. Shorter and more muscular, less hairy, okay? And he would run that place, and I'm like, dude, and people would come to him and say stuff, and he just loved it. It would fill him up. Aaron was a great facilitator. He would facilitate the business. We'd work, on, we'd work on contracts and projects and we'd get stuff done. And then I really liked recruiting people, okay? I loved recruiting people. And so we naturally went into our area of expertise and what we found is that one plus one doesn't have to equal two. 
When you are working in your area of strength, it gives you energy. It doesn't siphon it off from you. And if you're a final expense agent or a life agent or a, a guy that just came in for the free food, it doesn't matter. If you're tired of the business, it's because you're doing things that you don't like to do. And you need to begin outsourcing those things to a staff so you can build a business that outlasts you and that you can provide for your family even while you're long gone. You see, Vince Spampanato owned 25% of North Star Insurance Advisors. For 18 months before he passed away, he was totally out of the picture. But the business continued to grow, thrive, do very, very well, and even after he's gone, his kids are still provided for handsomely. If you wanna build a business like that, go ahead and clap your hands for me, okay? I'm gonna give you the recipe right now, and I'll just pass the offering plate around when I'm done, okay? <laughs> Some of you are already doing this by accident but we're gonna take it to the next level. We've come up with this concept that North Star Insurance Advisors called responsibility rationing. Write that down. That's what you need to do. You need to ration off responsibilities that do not generate new income for your business. You get paid to do one thing and one thing only. What's that? Make a freaking sale. That's it. You do not get paid to set appointments. You do not get paid to drive to appointments. You do not get paid to service your customers. I mean, it all leads to more money, but those are low value activities. And quite honestly, if you're the typical sales guy or saleswoman, that's really not like your big, strong talent that you should be showcasing. Those should be rationed off to somebody else. So by accident, some of you are already using this method. Who here buys leads? Okay, good. Buying leads, what that means is, is that somebody else is better at me doing direct mail or doing Facebook or doing telemarketing. So therefore, I'm going to siphon off this responsibility to somebody else so that I don't get stuck wasting my time doing that. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, like, how hard is it to get some cardstock paper, cut it in thirds, type up a little deal on a printer, print it out, pay for the postage, and put it out there. I mean, you could do that, right? Who does that? Please don't raise your hand. Even if it's true, just leave your hand down. Because I will not be able to hold back on that one, honey, okay? All right. I saw she go, okay, I won't. Okay, all right. All right. You need to have somebody who qualifies and sets your appointments for you. Now, I'm going to run some math with you if I have time at the end. But you need to find somebody who can set your appointments and qualify your leads for you. That way you're not stuck selling to duds. You ever get so desperate for a sale that like you get that lady on the phone and you know this ain't going nowhere, but you still try to set the appointment? Ugh, that's the worst feeling in the world. You ever have such a bad day that you hope your last appointment was a no-show? I, hello, I used to pray to God, Lord Jesus, please let this be a no-show, because I cannot handle no more of this BS today, okay? Because I was outside of my unique ability. Once you get your appointment setter to get really controversial, I believe you should be doing this over the telephone. And if you're not, you're going to be extinct in the next decade. You're dying a slow death. The key indicator for where sales are trending, at least for us, is watching what other industries are doing. Listen, if you're buying a mortgage, can you imagine if you called a mortgage company and the man said, I'm going to show up to your house and we're going to fill out this paperwork and we're going to go ahead and do, and he shows up with the, like one of them black like, suitcase things that my dad used to have all the time, you know, with the little key, keys on the side, like one, one, they're all one, 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 three times, you know, and then he opens it up. Like, that's not how mortgages are sold now. 
I bought my mortgage without even talking to a human being, completely online, through email, faxing over stuff. That's a key indicator where we're going, folks. But that's a little controversial, so I'll just let you know, between us girls, <laughs> if you want to sell face-to-face, -face, you still got time to figure out the rest, okay? After the sale is made, you need to learn to train somebody how to service your book of business. So they're not calling you. How many times do you spend like the whole day fixing one problem with one client? You must sell for Transamerica. Okay, now. <laughs> All right, so. They're gonna beep that out for real on the, on the recorded version. Do you know how much money that cost you? Thousands of dollars over some little check that I didn't do on this piece of paper, okay? You need to find somebody to do that for you. Because in my opinion, just about every insurance company is a necessary evil in the insurance industry, to be frank with you. They're not helping you run your business, they don't care. 10 people selling 10 policies or 100 people selling one policy, who cares? You know who cares? The people in this room care. We need to quit drinking the Kool-Aid and doing it the way that it's always been done because it ain't working. That's why only 8% of us make it. I have to look somewhere for it. Okay, we got, we got a branding issue, Cody? All right. That's why 8% of us make it. It shouldn't be that hard, folks. Can you imagine if you worked at a hospital where 92% of the doctors quit after three years? <laughs> I'm going to a voodoo doctor before I go there. It's ridiculous. And then after you found someone who's gonna service your book of business, you need to find someone who's just gonna call your clients just because. Soft touches is what I call that. Who calls their clients on their birthday? Okay, you don't have enough leads. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Pete, you fell right for it. Pete put up two hands. He was like, yeah, baby. He Facebook lived it and everything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> It, but seriously, if you're calling your clients on the birthday, you need more leads. However, it's still important, still important, but you should be too busy to do that. You should be making sales. You don't make sales by calling your clients on their birthday or on their anniversary or on Veterans Day. Like That stuff is super important, but I can hire someone for 10 bucks an hour to do that for me. I think I'm worth more than 10 bucks an hour. Are you worth more than 10 bucks an hour? Yes. Then quit doing 10 buck an hour stuff. Create a business. That's why we got in this industry. When you stay in your unique ability, folks, and you ration off those responsibilities, you actually run a business that you can take time away from, and it still runs without you. You see, right now, most of us in this room, we wake up every morning unemployed. That's a sucky feeling. We gotta grind every day. I gotta get that direct mail card and convince Mary that this is actually your signature. Is that what you signed up for? You signed up because the insurance industry produces more millionaires than any other industry in the history of mankind. Yet here we are talking about showing up to a house with a direct mail lead. That's absurd, that's absurd. Build a business. The people who are making the money have a business. They are not salespeople, they are business people. Listen, if I had time, I would run some numbers with you, okay? And that's why this whiteboard is here. And Cody's glad that I'm not working that whiteboard because I would show him up so good. My handwriting's way better than his. <laughs> but here's how much I believe in responsibility rationing. We found that we were really good at Facebook leads. I was generating 
Our Facebook budget per month, I won't tell you the budget because then I might get jumped in the parking lot, but um, we get a lot of leads. And I was getting them for less than $3 a lead. And then Cody hired Landon. And I said, Landon, what's, tell me what's going on here. And he told me, he pitched me, soft clothes. He could work on overcoming objections, but he did okay. <laughs> he didn't try five times at all. But you know what he did for me? Landon generates leads for me at $1.76 a lead now. If you're not using Landon to do your Facebook ads, you need to start that today. Today. I found that we were really good at training, but that we could not do it all the time. It was exhausting and we wanted to grow. So what did we do? I called up my good friend, Charlie Chena. I said, Charlie, I got a problem, man. I'm burnt out training all these people. Like, I need some, some, a system. He pitched me on light, he pitched my partner, Vince Spampanotto, on Lightspeed VT. We brought that into our business. See, I, I rationed off that responsibility. I found a partner who's better at that than me. That's okay. And by the way, if you have not bought Charlie's deal, it is a steal. Ooh, that's a good tagline. You should use that, okay? Because he charged me more for it, you know? And then I saw how cheap it was. I was like, oh, I'll just pay him for that too. Okay, whatever. We found that after we trained people how to use the tool, when we looked away, they stopped using the tool correctly. You know what I did? I hired my good friend, Coach Michael Burt, to come into my business. And what he's charging you for that, for Monster Academy, literally is less than what he charged me for 400 seats per seat, okay? In my opinion, in the insurance industry, that is the definition of a chargeback, okay? <laughs> We're going to talk about that after this, coach. Okay. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is that we live this every single day at North Star Insurance Advisors. Our agents do nothing but make sales. No driving, no qualifying, no servicing, no upselling. We got people in a customer service department that upsell our own people. And we get commissions. And we didn't know it was even coming. Because I'm good at talking to somebody transferring my conviction into them and convincing them to do business with me. That's how you need to run your business. John Pitts, I know I'm over. Where you at, John? Come, woo, okay, Jan, come here. This is how my, we used to even run our own convention and we were the MCs. And then last year at 8% Nation, <laughs> I saw this man in action. I'm like, I'm gonna ration off this responsibility. He does my conventions now. I do. And he's amazing, isn't he? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Okay. Pleasure. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you. I, listen, I'm not selling anything other than the recipe of how to build a business. But what I do think you need to buy is some of the stuff that's sold here today because they are freaking amazing and they've helped our business grow. Where this year, we'll write more than $25 million of business selling one carrier, one product, one way, which is the opposite of what the industry teaches you. Thank you very much. Yes! We're missing the North Star Insurance Society.